Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. And today I want to go through a couple of like the beginner guide, progression guide. I'm gonna be speed running this freaking game. I'm gonna be hitting every single milestone I can. I'm gonna be making sure that I am capped out by the end of day one. And so if you do want to learn how to do that, then you come to the right place. And so day one, week one generally is centered around essentially four goals. The first goal is unlock as much as you can. And so what I mean by unlocking as much as you can is that you want to essentially be capped out every single day. For you guys who didn't know, on day one there is a level 18 cap, there is also a cap actually on the main quest, and that main quest is going to be blocking you from different regions. So at the end of day one, essentially you want to have unlocked everything in this area because you'll pretty much be limited there. You want to push as far as the story lets you, so it's going to take you over here, it's going to take you over here, it's going to take you over here, and here, and here, and then it's going to end on there. And then from there, we're going to have to wait until the next reset before we can actually progress to the next part. The other part is that you want to push your levels as far as you can. So like I said, the day one level cap is going to be level 18. It might not actually be because there are some deviations from CN. So make sure that you're able to actually go around, finish a whole bunch of different content and push those levels. Now, some key elements in, in earning EXP and getting those levels are chests, right? So I just need to make quickly the distinction between each of the different chest types. So as you can see over here, we've got a round spherical chest and this chest is non-respawnable. So that means that once you've picked it up, it's not going to come back. So it's actually best to save as many of these chests as you can and only use them if you know you are not going to go over capped on level. A lot of these chests are actually also time gated so this is what it looks like. Essentially there is a barrier around it uh, maybe past like 24 hours or past 72 hours. After that you can then unlock this chest. Now Tower of Fantasy is notorious for time gating things. Like I said the main story chests like this as well as some of the other game modes and features. However there is still a lot to be done. And so if you're trying to avoid those spherical chests then which ones exactly do you get? Um, it's going to be this bad boy in the corner, the triangle chests. Now these triangle chests, they actually do respawn, but they also need keys if you want maximum rewards. These keys will be given to you after you finish each of your daily bounty quests. Other than that, you can actually just go around, do some exploration, throw some of those bombs into those weird places, etc, etc, until you hit about max level cap. So 17, 18, I'd be pretty happy with 17 to be honest, just so I can make sure that I'm not overcapping on EXP. And so whilst you're doing all of that, what I would recommend is actually getting all of the teleport points. So you can see like this one over here, that's the tower. That's the one that we're going to get compulsory, mandatory from the story. But then there are these ones over here scattered across the land. So for the starting area, there are going to be about like five to seven of them down here. Uh, I reckon it's going to probably take only like maybe five to seven minutes to get all of them. It's actually pretty easy. And then the last priority in the unlock as much as you can is going to be at about 90 minutes. So you see this guy over here, this is called the suppressor. And what the suppressor does is that it essentially allows you to explore further lands. Now, if we go back to the map, as you go further and further out like that way, you will actually start taking damage. It's almost like a poison fog kind of thing. And so the role of that suppressor that I just showed you at about 90 minutes, this guy over here, this allows you to actually explore those lands without taking any damage. On top of that, it also gives you a bunch of stats. So this one is attack, this one is all defense, and this one is HP. And so yeah, the reason that this is coming under the unlock as much as you can is because this suppressor or the lack of levels in the suppressor is actually going to cuck you if you have not had the appropriate levels unlocked as you progress through the game and maps. And so how exactly do you upgrade this suppressor? Well, you see, there are these upgrade materials over here. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but you can find them in places like ruins from different quests, etc, etc. Anytime you see this little thing, you should go and do it and then upgrade your suppressor. One of the key places that you will be getting these ones are the ruins. So if I come over here, uh, <laughs> made outfit. So these ruins are essentially like a bunch of different little dungeons in which you not only get those suppressor upgrade materials, but you also get some neat little items. So this one's on cooldown, but essentially this one is a platform gun. So when that platform comes back around, I'm going to shoot a platform onto it and then proceed to jump over. Oh my God, I freaking skipped it. Jump over all of those lasers. So here I'm going to shoot off the platform gun. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a portal gun, but it turns out it's a freaking platform gun and it rises. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of like Zhongli's E, except you can use it with anybody, right? And so each of these ruins are not only going to give you those suppressor materials, they're also going to give you stuff like that, these relics. And so that is probably the last priority I would say in terms of unlock as much as you can. And just to be really, really clear, those ruins, the place where you find those relics and suppressor upgrade materials, these are the ones 
that are denoting the ruins. You can see this blue one is the one that I've cleared. I believe that is the one that you must clear. And then there are two more, which will get you the portal gun as well as like a, I think it's a rocket launcher. No, it's not. It's actually like a force field kind of thing. So again, get all of these teleport points, get all of your levels, get all of the story done, and then get each of these ruins done. And with that, that is actually going to conclude the first part of this beginner tips. Uh, unlock everything and then let's start talking about number two which is complete your daily activities because these are time sensitive things. If you don't finish them today, then you'll lose progress for tomorrow kind of thing. So again, the first most obvious thing is to complete your daily bounties. Now, these daily bounties are incredibly, incredibly important because you actually do get a whole bunch of pulls from them. So if I freaking would scroll up in my VOD, you would see that there is an orange pull there. There is a black nucleus, black nucleus, black nucleus. And on top of that, there are massive chunks of EXP as you can see over here. Now these keys, down here and these are the ones that I talked about to use on those triangle chests. So the next thing to do is to clear Mia's kitchen three times a day. This is essentially just a whole bunch of free stuff. You don't even have to do anything in it. And if I go into it, you'll see all you have to do is click that button and she's going to prepare you some food. And at the end of it, we're gonna get a whole bunch of EXP. We're gonna get some of the different materials and we're also gonna get some coconut water. And so there we have it. That is the rewards. That is a sizable chunk of EXP. Remember, remember, remember about the EXP cap that I talked about. And that is why I'm recommending just get to about like level 17 combined with the daily with like stuff like this, the Mia's Kitchen, you're probably gonna over cap on the 18. I think it's actually possible to go from 15 to 18 from the daily bounties only. But regardless, my guys, this is Mia's Kitchen. You do this three times a day, you get rewards with a click of a button. That's it. The next thing you wanna do is dump your vitality, AKA your stamina, AKA your resin, whatever you wanna call it. Now, I'm on the third tab of this adventurer's journal thing, and you can see that everything is essentially locked. And the annoying thing is that all of the good stuff that you want to be farming with your energy Energy is locked behind levels as you can see level 20 level 21 level 23 28 29 now what you really do want to be farming is dimensional trials and interstellar exploration and obviously we can't farm this on the first day because our level cap is going to be level 18 but on the second day onwards you should be able to actually dump all of your stamina into these two game modes what they give are essentially upgrade materials for your simulacras as well as your weapons matrices etc etc it's going to be your prime juices and as for joint operation this is essentially a co-op mode uh, four player, I think. And if you can see the tiny ass pixel over there, it is going to be dropping gear. Now, you do not want to be farming gear with your hard earned resin or energy, stamina, vitality until you're able to actually farm the highest grade of gear. So, if you guys have played Genshin Impact, it is very, very similar to the whole artifact thing. Try to not farm artifacts until you're like AR 45 plus so that you can get the gold artifacts. Exactly the same concept over here. Don't farm for gear until you can get the highest grade of gear. Now, in the last tab of this book, there is something called ability training. Now, I don't know if I actually go ahead and click it, but this is really, really important because you can only do the ability training, I believe, a couple of times a day, maybe like two times a day or something. And so here is just some footage of what the ability training looks like. As you can see, this actually says must be completed today. So go ahead and complete them today and then reap this currency and then trade them in for the rewards. However, it's not like giga significant. It's just that the fact that this is time gated means that we should probably do it every day. And it's just a small little thing. And so that's essentially going to cover our complete daily activities kind of thing. Essentially, what you should do every day, especially on day one, because these things are time gated. Now, let's start talking about complete weekly tasks in which I see one right here. It's called Bygone Phantasm, and this bad boy is essentially going to give you a whole bunch of your armor upgrades. And I don't know of many sources of armor upgrades, maybe because I didn't get too far, but this is going to be one of the best sources, and you need to finish this one weekly. And so the next thing for the weekly tasks is obviously the weekly itself. And as you can see, we have this milestone kind of system in which we're going to be getting a whole bunch of different rewards as we hit each milestone. Now, there are actually a lot of different important materials in this, but the one I want to talk about most is this gold little nugget over here. It's essentially a ticket to loot world bosses. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of some conflicting information over here. You can see that there are one to, I believe, three of these tickets, or is it this one? Frick, they're both gold. Oh my god. No, either way, like one of these gold tickets are used for the world bosses to loot them. And essentially, what I'm trying to say is that you need to save a couple of these tickets. And the reason is because there is going to be, hopefully, one of the upcoming events, a world boss event, in which you can use these tickets 
to loot up those bosses. However, just for the intents and purposes of the first or second week of this game, I would say just dump them all onto your world bosses, which is my next point in completing your weekly tasks. You want to be using these, you want to be finishing the weekly ASAP so you can get these tickets to go loot those world bosses. All right, and then after this one, there's one more I want to talk about left. Uh, it's not any of these, but one thing I did want to say is if you don't really have much time to play, you can go into Omnium Beacon and then dump all of your stamina. It's like the easiest way. It's certainly not the most efficient, but it is actually the fastest if you are a little bit time hungry. Now, I hope I click into the last tab because that's what I'm looking for. Okay, and so the last weekly thing that I want to talk about is this guy over here, Frontier Clash. Now, Frontier Clash is another weekly thing where you can actually play with four other players to farm your gear upgrade material, your armor upgrade materials. Again, make sure you get this done before the end of the week so that you don't miss out on it. And then whilst I'm here, I'm looking at Apex League, which is your PvP and break fate. Just don't worry about them until a little bit later. Uh, actually right now, because we just finished with the complete weekly task segment. So after completing your weekly tasks, you want to go on and do more permanent content or monthly content, something like that. Something like PvP over here, Apex League. Now, you don't really want to go into PvP whilst you're not juiced up, right? You're going to go in and get stomped. And so personally, I probably wouldn't touch PvP unless you wanted a break from everything else. And I would probably rush it at the end of the month so that I can be at my strongest, have all of the weapons that I wanted, and then hopefully place a little bit higher so that I can get that sweet sweet mount however there are a whole bunch of other things to do the first is simply map progression map exploration because from this you actually get those omnium crystals for the suppressors but you also get the skins you also get a whole bunch of rolling currencies and all in all you're just unlocking more of the map you're going towards that 100 completion this is going to be there forever but you're going to be getting materials that you can be using towards all of your different progression the next thing is your cooking system so as you can see over here uh, there is a button down here to do your own cooking now what you can do is actually select your own materials for example like some lettuce and some fish or something i'm not sure if that actually turns into anything but essentially every time you discover a new recipe you will be rewarded with the dark crystals dark crystals being the best currency in the game and so you can actually head on over to some guide sites or whatever with these recipes go out and forage collect all the different mushrooms and fishes that you need and unlock those recipes after that what we've got on the screen are achievements so you can see there are also dark crystals being handed out here Again, reminder that all of this content is permanent, so there is no need to rush this. And so hopefully you've done all of your unlock as much as you can, daily activities, weekly activities, to be able to progress this somewhat because there will be new banners coming out. And those new banners, those limited banners, are going to have pretty cracked characters. And those cracked characters are going to be obtainable only by the Dark Crystals or if you pull out your credit card. And that's going to bring us to the last point of the video. Just have some fun with it because it's not every day that we actually get a full-fledged anime MMO out released for the public considering MMOs are so intensively time-consuming to actually develop. Enjoy yourselves, my guys. Just do it. And so with that, that's pretty much going to conclude the progression guide. That's essentially what I'm going to be doing, like from top to bottom. I'm going to be unlocking as much as I can. I'm going to be pushing levels, pushing story. I'm going to be completing the daily activities first, things that will expire in the next 24 hours. And then I'll do some weekly stuff. And then I will do some permanent content. Maybe I'll try getting my ass whooped over at PvP. Maybe I won't. <laughs> but with that, we are indeed going to wrap up this video. And so let me know if there was anything I missed, anything like blatantly important. I think that it is pretty comprehensive. But my guys, nobody is perfect, least of all me. So yeah, let me know if there's anything I missed or if there was anything you wanted to know further. And I'll try and answer them in the comments. And if you do end up leaving a comment or a question, Thank you guys so much. On the other hand, if you did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, catching me on the live stream, and also turning on that notification bell. But otherwise, my guys, as this uh, as this shed once said that's, that's blocking my way, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.